Mia tells Paul what her mother told her about her childhood, and Paul immediately accepts her mother's version as basically true. Well, I, I, I snapped at her. I said, that's, that's kind of a strange toast, considering you've always blamed me for ruining your modeling career. Did you tell her that? Well, you won't believe what she said. She said that she didn't really have much of a career. That she wasn't that pretty, and that she never would have risen above her job as an underwear model, which is not what I grew up hearing. Right. Her, her mantra. Her false mantra. Did you ask her why, why she did that? My mother said that it was kind of her cover story. That having me didn't ruin her looks, it destroyed her mind. She said that after I was born, she lost it. She couldn't get out of bed. She didn't want to eat. She said she stayed in her room because she was afraid that if she left it, she would kill herself. And that there was some small sane part of her that didn't want to do that to me. You know, there are some mothers who get so depressed that they lose sight of even that. Okay. So where was your father during all of this? She said he just moved into the living room. He didn't try to get her professional help? Are you kidding? <laughs> he was first generation, but he would have been mortified to ask someone for help to admit that his wife was crazy. So he took care of you during this time? He did everything. He had to. She didn't even want to breastfeed. So really, you weren't mothered for, for over a year? When she came out of it, somehow she did. She said she had this rush of feeling and that she wanted to be close to me. But by then, my dad and I were just inseparable. I think the word she used was impenetrable. And that my father had never forgiven her and that he used our closeness to show her how she'd failed. And she said she was so guilt-ridden that she thought she didn't deserve me, and so she just kept away. It's quite an admission. It must have given you a lot to take in about both your parents. Yeah, I guess. Do you think her depression might also explain why she didn't get pregnant again for 10 years? She talked about that, too. The twins, the cherished twins, they were an accident. <laughs> She said that she was terrified when she found out that she was pregnant again. And that she asked my father to hire a sitter so, you know, someone would take care of us if she couldn't. And according to her, he said no. That, that he couldn't afford it. And she, she insisted that it was his idea to send me out to his sister's out in New Jersey. And you don't believe her? Of course not. My father adored me. She also said that I was wrong about him coming out to visit me every Sunday, that, that I must have made that up because they came together once a month. That's not possible. Actually, me it is. Because it's entirely possible you airbrushed her out of your memories at that time. Sometimes the need to protect one parent is so strong a child puts all the blame on the other. Why? Did she give up? Okay, she was sick for a year. But after that, why didn't she fight harder to be my mother? How, how come nobody sticks by me? But she did say that she tried, but that there was something uh, impenetrable about your father's bond with you. Why are you taking her side? I'm not trying to take her side. All I'm suggesting is that it may not be as black and white as you remember it. It's black and black. She manipulated me one way for my entire life, and now she wants to manipulate me the other way to get rid of her guilt? That might be true. But it's also possible, perhaps in her, in her own clumsy way, that your mother was trying to reach out. 
She saw that you were in a crisis, in some way like her own crisis. Yeah, you were in pajamas, you were depressed. It was related to a pregnancy, and she recognized it right away. She was trying to help. So once again, I had a chance at intimacy, and I screwed it up. I pushed her away. Is that your point? Damn it, just stop all the therapy and tell me what you think. Okay. Your mother tells you all these things and you get angry. What about your father? I felt bad for him. His wife gives birth, he wants to celebrate, and she's ready to jump out the window? Plus, he, he, has, he has a crying, hungry infant to take care of. He has to be both the mother and the father, so good for him. Has it ever occurred to you that he might have colluded in the lie that she told? Well, you just said it. She told the lie. But he never corrected it. Why do you think that is, Mia? Uh, he, he was helping her save face. For 43 years? Can't you accept that he was a good father? No, nobody in therapy has a good dad. A good dad who shipped a 10-year-old girl off to New Jersey rather than pay for a babysitter? There had to be a way to keep you at home. I mean, families find a way of working things out. Well, she's probably lying about all that, too. She could be. But let's just take her at her word for a moment. What that means is that you have to reevaluate who your parents are and what they did. Maybe your father wasn't the ideal man that you thought, and maybe your mother was actually trying to connect with you. What's going on here? She, she decides to rewrite history, and, and you just go along with it? Well, sometimes we find it easier to hold on to the fiction. It's not fiction, Paul. I'm telling you, my mother was never there for me, and my father always was. That's your mantra, Mia. And maybe it's as false as your mother's. I mean, look at the way you defend it, how angry you get if I challenge it. I ask you to see your parents in a different light. I just ask you to do that. And you go on the attack. You accuse me of, 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 of taking sides. Well, maybe I just don't like it when you blame him for everything. It's not about blame, yeah. What I'm asking you to do is more complex than that. I want you to question the way that you have thought about your parents for most of your life. Oh, is that all? I know it isn't easy. But I can tell you from personal experience, it's better to do it when your parents are still alive. You don't go through this. You're gonna stay where you are. You're gonna keep punishing the men in your life for not being what you need. Men like Bennett. Ben Bennett was an asshole. Or like me. You blamed me for the abortion, but wasn't it your father who arranged it? He was just supporting me. Or maybe he was, once again, trying to hold on too tight to keep you as his little girl. No. No, the abortion was my idea. I told you that last week. You said you haven't heard from him lately. Even though he, he must have known you were sick. He was, he was always there when I was a girl. Was he? How about your piano? You said it was the one thing that always made you happy. Did your mother talk about what happened to it? that he sold it. He said with two babies in the house, there was enough noise. Let me ask you something. What would happen if you believed her? If you actually let yourself feel the hurt and the anger that you might have buried for this perfect dad? What is Paul's justification for attacking Mia's memory of her father so vigorously? It is because he knows that it is virtually impossible for someone to have serious trouble relating to members of the opposite sex after having an ideal childhood relationship with a parent of the opposite sex. Paul knew from the beginning of her therapy that Mia's memory must be wrong.